We're just outside Ciudad Juarez, and this is the last train stop for this freight train that's eventually gonna head into the city. And you can see already dozens of migrants in several of these cars on top of them, all about. They're asking us if we have water, if we have food. We climb on. The train slowly starts up again, heading north. We meet migrants from all over. Honduras. Honduras. Says he's from Honduras originally and wants to go to the U.S. Felipe Marcela from Colombia, also hoping to enter the U.S. I asked her why the U.S. She said to have a better future. Omar from Venezuela. In Baltimore. He's trying to get to Baltimore, Maryland. We rode for an hour. They've been on here for days, 12 days for Roberto and his family. He's with his dad and his sister. Says they've been attacked, they've been robbed. Describes a really treacherous track. Part of the train journey north for some is on what's called La Bestia, the Beast. It's also known as the Train of Death and often controlled by cartels. <clears throat> Roberto wears a face mask to not infect the others. Tells me he got sick early on in his travels. <coughs> Says a lot of them have been sick and over the journey he had to leave his two kids, young ones. He tells me his two toddlers nearly died, so he sent them back with family in Honduras as he continues on. They stand, sit, and sleep on metal construction beams covered in plastic, dirty clothes and cardboard, used to make it as comfortable as possible. The heat and sun, brutal. At night, it's the cold and wind. The smells, a range, sewage at times, and burning trash as we drove past what appears to be an incinerator. Their souls, worn down. It's very dangerous for women, too. And they said food is, is just really scarce right now. Omar spent four days on board already. Food is run out. He showed us the little water he has left and the documents he clings to, keeping secured in plastic. Well, he's reading through all the different situations that would allow you to enter the U.S. So he's got it printed out in Spanish. And, and he's got it, the address of his friend in Baltimore that he hopes to get to. Yeah, dónde vas? O sea, dónde quieres ir? Four days on the train for him. He said the first day he almost got really sick because the sun was just so strong. And now he's making sure to keep covered as much as possible. He wants to go to New York. For Omar, it's a familiar journey. He left Venezuela six months ago, already expelled once from the U.S. for trying to cross. He'll try again. Legally or illegally, he will cross. He tells me. I ask him if he's hopeful. I've got a lot of faith, he tells me. Ultimately, he hopes to get money to send back to his two kids in Venezuela. As we pull into Ciudad Juarez, about 25 miles still from the border wall with El Paso, we and the others climb out. And that's it, you can see most everyone now getting off is basically the last stop. Omar, among the last off, carrying his only belongings and somehow a smile. Planning to cross immediately. Iban a cruzar hoy, no? Sí, hoy. Bueno. 